IO, in this video I want to show you a PCB design of this ideal diode bridge rectifier that I made. I made it so that the sides are similar to a standard GBU package. I also made it breadboard compatible for everyday use and with an M3 screw hole at the center for its sink mounting. This ideal diode module can work from 9V to 60V and from DC to 60Hz. If you want to help this channel growing, you can subscribe to my channel. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Ok, let's first take a look at the schematic. We start with the power flex on the top here for the AC and DC. Under there we have the input-output connector and a bidirectional TVS diode, a 60V one. And we use it to protect our circuit from input transients. Then we have the LT4320 circuit with all the labels to the respective MMOS. We also have a ceramic capacitor recommended for bypassing and a unidirectional TVS for brief output over voltage protection. The MOSFET I used are those, whatever they called, MOSFET from Infineon that have a typical RDS on of 5 milliohm each. Remember to use a MOSFET whose gate threshold voltage is above 2 volts. By the way, all the info you need are on the LT4320 datasheet and you can also refer to the evaluation board manual, link in the description. Now let's jump into the PCB design. As you can see, it's a 4 layer board, so that ground connections are easier. Starting from the connector, we have a ground pad that connects through a copper pool to our TVS. And the other pin goes to the back of the PCB through some vias. The AC2 pad goes on the top and then to this small pad here. Back down to the AC1 pad, it's the same as the AC2. It passes under the capacitor and then it reaches the LT4320 pad. As last, we have the output that goes down on the back through some vias to a copper pool and then up again to the pad. On the back we see that the MOSFETs are connected through the vias to the various copper pool. These are 0.6.4 mm vias whereas the smaller ones are 0.5.3 mm vias. Let's now go to the 3D viewer and as you can see I have all the 3D models here and on the back we have the four MOSFETs. So it looks something like this and in the end I'm really satisfied with the overall design and component layouts. As a last note, on the back we have only the four MOSFETs and nothing else because those are thin profile components and when we attach the heatsink we want the heatsink to stick on the MOSFET so components with higher heights uh, will have been a problem. Now let's gonna test it. But first let me thank my sponsor PCBWay who provided the PCB used in this video. If you want really good looking PCB I highly suggest to check PCBWay.com using the link in the description. They can also assemble PCBs for you or offer 3D printing and CNC machining with tons of material to choose with. Just check PCBWay.com, link in the description. So first I want to show you that with an M3 screw you can attach it to an heat sink and as you can see it works just not with this one that is not tall enough and uh, it exposes some part of the upper MOSFET. But then I found one that if I reverse it's a perfect fit. Now will this circuit rectify AC? I have here my power cord that goes to the alligator clips, to the transformer and to the bridge rectifier with a capacitor. And this is the output of the transformer, 20 volt AC. And this is the DC output. This is instead the waveform output uh, so as to load it's clean. 
Hmm, bad news guys, I was going to do an AC test with a load, but this transformer was trash. This was a waveform with only 300 milliamps. Maybe it was too old. Sorry guys. But we can always test on the AC. I'm doing my test and at no load I measured 19 millivolt drop, whereas at 1 amp I was at 38. I've gone up to 5 amp, which led to 127 millivolt of voltage drop per MOSFET, so in total 254 millivolt every 5 amp, which is pretty good. Okay, now let's compare it to a regular full bridge rectifier. At no load, we have a huge difference in voltage drop, and when we start to draw some current, we can see that the voltage drop on the full bridge rectifier rises to a little more than 0.8 volt. The voltage slightly changes but not really that much as expected from diodes. At 5 amp the total voltage drop of my little bridge is close to 250 millivolt, whereas the real one drops more than 1.6 volt. So with this either diode bridge, we can have a lower voltage drop and fewer power losses in respect to a standard one. But some of you may have noticed one thing. Why is my voltage drop 120 millivolt per MOSFET? The earliest one of the MOSFETs is 5 milliohm maximum. So if we multiply this by 5, which is the current, I should have read only 25 millivolt. Well, guess what? When dealing with such low resistance, even the resistance of the contact you solder on the PCB starts to matter. So I've soldered gold-plated ones which hopefully have a lower resistance and I added the solder also on the top of the pad. And with those adjustments I've got only 40 mV. That's one third of the other idle bridge rectifier. The video hands here. Please subscribe if you want really to support me and thank you for watching.